Let's just go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Lord, we ask your spirit to guide us, to lead us, to love us, to, to open our hearts so that our eyes can be under, uh, the eyes of our understanding can be open. We trust in you, Father, and we trust your spirit. We trust in your Son. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my title today is Always Talking About God's Heart. That's the title. Always Talking About God's Heart. Well, the reason for that title is that you'd be surprised how many people come up to me and they, they say something like that. They say, Rand, you're always talking about God's heart. And they say, you know, God is God. They kind of, this is where they're really going with it. God is God. And uh, he should be reverenced and obeyed. But you get off on these areas like there's something in God that's, that's something we should be tender with or care about or something like that. And, um, you know, I understand. Yeah, God is God. Uh, no question about that. But really, what is he? What is his substance? What is his being? I mean, we talk a lot about the grace of God, but God isn't grace. You know, God's not grace. He's gracious, but that's not his substance. That's not his being. And, um, of course, you know in 1 John, 1 John 4, there, if you'll go there with me, that's, that's where we're going to look at this a little more closely. Um, 1 John has a lot of information on God, uh, but one of the most significant ones is in uh, chapter 4 and verse 16. Well, let's, let's see. Uh, let's do both verse 8 and 16. He that loveth not, uh, loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. That's 1 John 4, 16. And verse, uh, I think that's 8. And then verse 16, And we have known and believe that God hath toward us the love that he hath toward us. God is love. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So, to me, if we're gonna, if we're gonna just be little humans on the earth, and there's a great big God somewhere, um, and we're supposed to just, you know, obey God, um, then you know there's no need for even putting these kind of scriptures in here. But these scriptures are coming from John, John the Beloved. And John is trying to communicate God on a different level than what the Jews had seen and understood him to be uh, prior to this. And uh, so to relate to God by his being, if we're going to relate to God by his being, like the scriptures say here, that means that we're going to have to have a relationship with God on a heart level and on a being level, and that's His being. A lot of times our relationship with God is on our being level, and we're not love. He, God, is love. Okay, So then that means that we're going to, if God is love, then that means we're going to have to relate back to Him with love then see, because that's what he is and that's to, that's how you relate to him according to his being and you know as i said most people they're they're really striving to become obedient christians and that's why some of these people you know address that to me well you know you're always talking about god's heart but to know to talk about his heart is to talk about him, to know him, to relate to him different than just, you know, some sort of a Christian mentality that is not really on a, the level and the basis that I've been talking about. And, and you know, a lot of times when we, <clears throat> this may happen immediately or later on, you know, when we first get saved, a lot of times we're focusing on God's love for ourselves we're focusing on god's love for ourselves okay 
Well, that's not the same as focusing on God as love. That's focusing on God's love for us. And uh, usually when we get saved, uh, we always, you know, first think, you know, why me, Lord? Why did you save me? I mean, what was so special about me that you, you saved me? And, you know, I don't know. If you look at that view to me, you can see that it's pretty self-centered, you know. Uh, and if nothing else, it's certainly self-focused. Um, so I just jotted down a little topic here. The love of God comes from God's being, for Him being love. He is love. The love of God is not just something He did. It is something He is. And, uh, and like I said, you think about it, I mean, all the religions of the world, they, you know, they have him fashioned in some manner and whatever, but at his heart, he's love. So to me, talking about the heart of God is, is worth it. Um, and uh, I wrote down, little do we realize that our salvation was not due to us, but to the specialness of God. And, and I've spoken on this many times that we attribute so much to the grace of God, you know. And, uh, you know, we understand, well, we didn't merit this and God did it anyway. Uh, but, you know, when you start talking about the love of God, you're talking about something that is more and deeper than just grace. Because grace, even in the way that we use it, is kind of a thing in itself apart from God, but I mean, but it came from Him, but it's, it's God's grace. Uh, whereas His love, that's just Him. That is just Him. Um, so, um, you, you think about uh, attributes. There's so many attributes. And, and uh, you know, even in some of our Bible school classes that I've created and taught, you know, we talk about the attributes of God, which are fine. But that would be, you know, we could talk about your attributes or my attributes. You can talk about outward attributes. You can talk about uh, things that are pretty much, you know, specific to me or something like that, which is very much not like everybody else in some ways. Um, but to glorify God by talking about His attributes that's different because his being is love. He's, you know, if, to me, let's glorify him. Let's glorify God. God is love. And let's focus in on that to know him. So I have shared sometimes on this that God wanted our love, that God wanted that. And so... Um, I wrote a, a little scenario here. What if God, from the start, wanted a relationship of love with us? Wow. How many Christians really would even think like that? They would go, no, you know. I mean, they're just trying to be right all the time. But, you know, I, I also wrote, what if getting such a thing would be to him the fulfilling of all the other things that he seemed to be interested in? To have a relationship of love with us and us giving it back uh, would be uh, to him the fulfilling of all the other things that seemed interesting to him. And then I wrote, what if, three what ifs, what if he wanted it to come from us willingly and not because it was commanded? So we know in the scriptures that there's basically, you know, two bases of love. One is the law and one is the, the new covenant. And we know that, um, you know, Moses got the law and he basically didn't hardly make it down the mountain before they broke the, the law. Uh, and, of course, the first two commandments of that was, number one, love God with all your heart. To love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the first two are love. Therefore, uh, you know, you, you, 
I've said this many times too, you can't command love. Either it's there or it's not. Well, that's what the law was doing. But then Jesus comes along and he's sitting there with a bunch of people and somebody asks him, so what's the greatest commandment? Okay, what's the greatest commandment? Um, what does he do? He points to the first two. He points to the first two. He said the first is to love God, and he goes through the whole thing, and then he points, and the second is liken unto it. That's, and, and he, he brings that out, and then he, he says love is the fulfilling of the law. Love fulfills it all. Okay. Now, of course, we're not just talking about um, human love. Well, I love God like that. We're talking about his kind of love, like as described also in 1 John 3, 16. You know, by this perceive we the love of God, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to do that for the brethren. Well, see, he leaves himself out, but we ought to... The, but but that's only fulfilling that scripture if you took 1 John 3 16 by itself is only fulfilling the second commandment so God's not going to speak up and let, he just wants us to have it within us that we would love him even above that to the same degree of self giving okay and then on you know what do you mean the same degree of self giving um, I wrote the little subtitle here, God's love poured in or God who is love. You know, Paul in uh, Romans 5, he talks about that. And he's, he talks about the love of God has been poured into our hearts. That's the New King James Version says that. The love of God has been poured into our hearts. Well, that's amazing, but there's something even more, as usual. Uh, I wrote, yes, the love of God has been poured into our hearts, but it is also true that God, who is love, has come into our hearts. See? God, who is love, has come into our hearts didn't say God who is the Lord of all and master that's going to rule over everything you do and you better do it right or he's going to, you know. This is, this is the love of God being poured into us and then God who is love being the manifestation, the fullness of that. Um, so um, in that love, he made us one. He didn't just, this, in other words, in other words, he didn't just give us a commandment. He made us one with him. And, uh, uh, and the act of love that he did toward us is only a picture of who he is, the way that he loves, the way that the love is that he poured in us, the way that, he, that God that is love, will be within us. So, you know, oneness, oneness means that. It means loving him back with all your heart, soul, strength. It means, it means being attentive to what he holds uh, important, those kind of things. And, um, you know, sadly, some people take oneness and they use that to, to justify or comfort themselves in their contrariness from God. Um, well, oneness isn't supposed to be doing that for us. Forgiveness will do that. But oneness is supposed to be like us fulfilling that. Oneness isn't an excuse or a way to get out of it uh, and, to, or, and to fail. That's the place where we don't fail is heart, even if we fail in certain other things. And so, um, uh, that love brings us, his love and him being love brings us into that certain kind of love. 
And so when we mess up, it should drive us to his heart because we love him and because we want to be with him. And, you know, I know I've talked, you know, because I've done a lot of counseling as a, as a pastor and, you know, talked to a lot of people in there. They say, well, when I, you know, when I sin, I, I don't even want to be around God. You know, well, I've learned when I'm off um, that I, the, the one place I want to be is with God. I run to God. I don't run away from Him at that time. So, um, just a conclusion. Let me just read uh, this little conclusion. So, is this true concerning God wanting a flow of love to and from us? Is this true? If so, then... Whatever disappointments we may assume God experiences over our disobedience, how much more pain must come to Him when we break love? That would be so much beyond merely being disappointed with us. To Him, it would be heartbreaking. Okay, well, y'all, most of you have heard me share along these lines. You've heard me point out scriptures that showed literally the heartbreak. Even, even last night I was sharing one of, of us when we miss heart things, not commandments and break them, heart things. So I'll just end with these scriptures again, partially, here we go, 1 John 4. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. That's the love that we've known and believed. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. In this is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. We love him. We love him. We love him because he first loved us. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Bless you, Father. Bless you, O being of love. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your Son that is one with you in this and your Spirit who is one with you. You said in Romans that you've poured, poured out into us this love. Father, we want to start relating to you on that basis and not on the, our failures and constantly troubled about our relationship with you over our failures, but to run to you and tell you that we love you. Even in our failures, our heart is with you and we love you and that we care about you. Father, we thank you as your spirit breathes this more and more into us. Give us that peace that passeth understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.